With the help of unmanned space probes, scientists today can carry out missions that astronomers of the past could only dream of, direct visits to strange cosmic worlds. In the meantime, several spacecraft have been sent to the distant reaches of our solar system, which in previous centuries were still considered unreachable. In the course of these ambitious space projects, experts were granted detailed insights into the characteristics and compositions of the most diverse celestial bodies, which should extend the astronomical knowledge of mankind kind significantly. Although the development of such probes takes many years and enormous financial resources, it's often necessary to deliberately destroy their respective spacecraft at the end of their missions in order to obtain the maximum scientific knowledge. Which unmanned space probes have already been deliberately directed to their own doom and which circumstances were the basis for these destructive maneuvers, we'll show you now. Are you excited about the breathtaking discoveries and the unique phenomena in the universe? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and click on the bell to learn more about the distinctive spectacles in the cosmos in the future. Feel free to show us you like the content of our posts with a thumbs up. Galileo In the fall of 1989, the unmanned spacecraft Galileo set off for the realms around Jupiter to deliver important new information about the giant gas planet and its moons as part of its exploratory mission. Although four space probes had already flown past this largest representative of our planetary system at that time, they were only able to capture a few informative snapshots during their flybys. NASA's Galileo spacecraft, on the other hand, was developed for the sole purpose of orbiting the gas giant over a long period of time. The knowledge gained from this project was simply groundbreaking. Among other things, the mission succeeded in detecting liquid salt water beneath the surface of Jupiter's satellites Callisto, Europa, and Ganymede. Furthermore, we now know that the satellite Io is characterized by intense volcanic activity, which exceeds the corresponding spectacles on our blue home planet by a factor of 100. The entering daughter probe, in turn, gave the experts the first direct measurements of Jupiter itself. In the process, researchers obtained a wealth of insightful data about the gas giant structure, clouds, lightning, and mass spectrometry. While all of these fascinating results were closely related to the original goals of the mission, the discovery of the first known asteroid moon was at the time somewhat unexpected. But Galileo actually passed by the asteroid Ida in 1993, during which time its constant companion, the chunk Dactyl, about a half mile in size, was also discovered. Two years earlier, NASA spacecraft had passed by the asteroid Gaspera at a distance of only 1,000 miles producing equally detailed images of the natural, astronomical missile. On September 21st, Galileo had finally reached the end of its lifespan. At that time, the spacecraft was deliberately steered into Jupiter's atmosphere, where it eventually burnt up. Due to a lack of fuel and failures in the electronics, there was a risk that the probe could crash into the Europa satellite and contaminate it with terrestrial microorganisms. Such a scenario would have greatly complicated the future research for extraterrestrial traces of life on Jupiter's satellite. Messenger The year is 2004, when NASA's Messenger space probe begins its journey into the vast expanses of the universe. After performing several flybys of Earth, Venus, and Mercury, the unmanned spacecraft finally entered orbit around the smallest planet in our solar system on March 18, 2011. Messenger became the second probe to visit Mercury after Mariner 10 and the first in history to orbit the celestial body. In the course of its exploration, the probe succeeded in mapping the small planet, measuring its magnetic field, and analyzing its geological composition. In April 2015, however, the mission was nearing its final Final stage. The spacecraft's fuel had run out. So it happened that on April 30th, the spacecraft hit the planet's far side at a speed of almost a mile per second, leaving behind an impact site with an estimated diameter of almost 50 feet. Interesting in this case is the fact that the resulting crater has not been investigated since then. However, this could change over the course of the currently running Bepi Colombo mission. This is a cooperation between ESA and the Japanese space agency JAXA, in the context of which a four-part space probe was developed and sent in the direction of Mercury. After several swing-by maneuvers, Bepi Colombo is scheduled to enter the planet's orbit at the end of 2025.
To what extent the crater created by Messenger can be examined is still literally written in the stars. L Cross We know the surface of the Earth's moon is littered with innumerable, sometimes imposing craters. However, to decipher the detailed nature of our constant cosmic companion, it is sometimes necessary to add another man-made impact site to its impressive crater landscape. So it was that in the course of the L Cross mission, Completed in 2009, a NASA spacecraft intentionally impacted the lunar surface. As part of this endeavor, researchers hope to gain definitive knowledge about the existence of water at the southern polar region of our satellite. After EDIS, the launch vehicle Centaur's upper stage crashed into the moon at a speed of 1.5 miles per second. Elcross traversed the resulting ejection cloud and radioed the data it collected to Earth in real time. Subsequently, NASA's spacecraft was also scheduled to smash into the outer surface of the moon. It was then time for the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and several Earth-based telescopes including Hubble to document the event in detail. The amount of hydroxyl, a molecule consisting of an oxygen and a hydrogen atom, allows important conclusions to be drawn about the proportion of ice or water in the corresponding crater. While the first evaluation still came to the result that the water portion on Earth's satellite was smaller than that of the driest terrestrial deserts, the data published soon thereafter showed that substantial quantities of water could be proven in the subsequent ejecta cloud. Deep Impact the name Deep Impact already gives us an idea of the objectives of the NASA space probe that left our planet in January 2005. The focus of scientific interest was Temple 1, a short period comet with a diameter of about 3.5 miles. This astronomical object orbits the Sun every five and a half years, and the comet can come within 83 million miles of our terrestrial home. The main goal of the Deep Impact mission was again to study the comet's interior in detail. What are the key properties of a comet's nucleus? How does the composition of the surface layers compare with the layers in the interior? To answer these and other research questions, the heart of the astronomical object had to be uncovered. To do this, experts placed a projectile weighing more than 815 pounds into the trajectory of Temple 1. The ensuing collision left a crater on the comet. The ejecting material could then be examined in detail by the spacecraft's instruments and other telescopes. Thus, for the first time, experts were able to take a direct look at the interior of a comet. The corresponding material originates from the time when our domestic solar system was just formed. In detail, the nucleus material was composed of porous, comparatively fragile materials, with about half of the comet nucleus consisting of cavities. Furthermore, traces of water ice were discovered on the surface of the nucleus. Researchers were surprised by the fact that the surface of the nucleus was not only characterized by impact craters, but also by irregularities caused by solar heating and the loss of ice. In fact, different geological layers could be identified here, which means that Temple 1 either resulted from the fusion of two bodies, or that comets in general undergo certain geological processes. DART while all the cases so far presented have been completed missions and maneuvers, the DART project has just begun. In fact, the spacecraft that gave it its name did not leave the Earth until November 24, 2021. Yet this ambitious undertaking by NASA and ESA is fully focused on terrestrial asteroid defense. The target of the cosmic probe is the double asteroid Didymus, which is currently orbiting at a distance of 9 million miles. NASA's DART spacecraft will eventually impact the smaller of the two asteroids to determine whether it's possible to manipulate the orbit of a medium-sized asteroid, an endeavor that has not yet been tested, let alone put into practice. Following the targeted collision, ESA's Hera spacecraft will travel to the region of the impact to study its consequences and the possible alteration of Didymus's orbit. If the project is successful, this would be the first chapter in the planetary defense against those asteroids that may one day threaten to crash into Earth. Now it's your turn. What do you think about the destructive maneuvers of unmanned spacecraft? Just write us your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's post in the comments. Are you in the mood for more exciting videos on the topic of space? Then take a look at the other interesting contributions on our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the images in the credits. Thanks for your interest, take care, and we'll see you next time.